Beautiful. 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 Easy work. Good job. Let Bobby show you now. Look. When you come in the arena and you see me play, you see me play, don't you? You see me give everything I got, right? But we talking about practice right now. What's going on? It's your boy, KCJ, and I'm back with another banger for you guys. All my real ones, please give this video a big thumbs up because it helps the channel grow. And for those of you who are new, subscribe. With that being said, let's jump into the video. Who is Danny Swift Garcia? Danny Garcia was born March 20th, 1988 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His parents are originally from Puerto Rico. He started boxing when he was seven years old. One day he walked in the Harrogate Boxing Club and started training. The trainers there told him to come back when he was 10. In Philly, you have to be 10 in order for insurance to cover a boxer. At that point, his father, Andrew Garcia, went to prison for possession and intent to distribute cocaine. His father went away for two years. During that period, life was hard on Danny Garcia's family. Their house had gotten foreclosed and they became homeless. They lost everything. Danny wasn't able to attend school. He got left behind in the second and third grade back to back, not because he wasn't smart. His family was in a situation where he wasn't able to make it. Their family structure just fell apart after his father left. He recalled one time when he woke up on his birthday and didn't even know it was his birthday. They didn't even have money to get him a birthday cake. He visited his father twice while he was incarcerated. Andrew Garcia said he didn't want them to visit because he just wanted to do his time. It was more painful on him to see his family and not be able to leave with them. When his father was released, Danny was staying with his aunt down the street. He spotted his dad down the block at their old house. He ran to his dad and gave him a big hug. Danny Garcia got emotional talking about this situation in an interview saying, it was the hardest part of my life. Danny wasn't mad about their family situation. He just didn't understand it until he was older. Going through hard times created the fighter he is today. You won't hear him talk much about his childhood because he doesn't want anybody feeling sorry for him. This is Danny Garcia on his father going to prison. My father, he was the one who made sure everything was okay. So when he left, it was like everything fell apart. It was the hardest part of my life, but it made me the fighter I am. This is Andrew Garcia on his incarceration. Hey, I did what I had to do. My kids ate. That's what matters to me. Danny Swift Garcia is now 10 and able to box. Andrew Garcia paid for a trip for Danny to fight in a tournament, the Silver Gloves in Kansas City. Garcia lost the first night. He didn't take it serious and started playing around and having fun, just being happy to attend and being out of state. He didn't realize how hard his father had worked to afford for a trip for them to get there. When Danny got back to the hotel room, Andrew threw him against the wall and said, for now on, I'm training. And if you ever lose again, I'ma hurt you. I had to work my ass off to get you here. This ain't a game. Andrew Garcia worked hard providing for his family. Once he told his son this was their way out, from that moment on, Danny started taking boxing serious, understanding that his father believed in him. Ever since then, he's won the ringside tournament, the under-19 national champion, and was the U.S. champion finishing his amateur career with a record of 107 wins and 13 losses. Let's go back to Andrew Garcia jacking Danny up in the hotel room. In an interview with the Bleach Report, I have both sides of the story. Now my language is going to get a little bit vulgar here, so please excuse my French, but I want to give it to you raw. Now, this is Danny's side of the story. He put an iron in my face and said, if you ever lose again, I burn your face off. I said, oh shit. Now this is Andrew's side of the story. When he went in the room, I went in first. And when he came in, I grabbed him, threw his ass up against the wall and said, you little motherfucker, I'll kill you. Real loud, Angel added. I work from nine to nine. You want to run around eating fucking hot dogs, motherfucker? Danny added, that was a make or break moment for me. Angel said, woke his ass up. That's why they call his father Crazy Angel. Now, let me give you a little backstory on the Garcias and how they migrated to the U.S. Angel's family were farmers in Puerto Rico. His uncle was the first to migrate to the U.S. mainland, eventually settling in Philadelphia. In the 1960s and 70s, American companies would fly Puerto Ricans here to be apple pickers in North Philly. They had the Blueberry Bus at 3.30 a.m. and that's what 
his family did. When Angel parents divorced, his mother joined his brother in the US and sent for her four children one year later. Then in 2006, Angel was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer. While Angel was sidelined, Danny stayed in shape in the gym where he was consistently approached with contract offers from rival trainers. Danny said that he would think in his mind, I ain't signing with these motherfuckers. His family feared that he had to have his vocal cords removed. He underwent chemotherapy but couldn't stand the radiation and stopped after only two weeks. But instead of the cancer getting worse, it miraculously went into remission, leaving only a distinct rasp in his voice. Now this is what Angel said about beating the cancer. God gave me the gift of training. Why did God save my voice? Because I'm Danny's voice. He's so humble and quiet. I needed to be that person for him. On August 15, 2011, Garcia won the vacant NABO Junior welterweight belt in Los Angeles, fighting on the HBO pay-per-view undercard of Hopkins vs. Dawson 2 on a split decision over former champion Kendall Holt. Now, let's get into some of the more prominent matches. It was announced that Garcia would get his first world title opportunity challenging Mexican legend and ring top 10 light welterweight Eric Morales. Puerto Rico versus Mexico. Now, for the WBC Welterweight Championship, might I add. Now, the fight took place on March 24, 2012. Morales came in two pounds over contracted limit and was stripped by the WBC of his title. The title was only at stake for Garcia. Morales was fined 50,000, 25,000 per pound, which was given to Garcia, of course. As the fight progressed, Garcia gained control, scoring a knockdown in the 11th round before receiving a unanimous decision in his favor. On May 23rd, 2012, ESPN announced that Garcia would next fight against the British boxer Amir Khan for the WBA super title at the pre-fight conference on June 4th. Khan and Garcia's fathers both got into a heated exchange resulting in both fighters promising to knock each other out on July 14th. Now, Khan won the first two rounds and could have been on his way to winning the third, but with 29 seconds left in the round, Garcia countered a Kong combination with a left hook that caught Kong in the neck and dropped him to the canvas. Garcia punished Khan the rest of the fight. The ref decided that the champion had taken enough punishment and stopped the fight, awarding a technical knockout victory. After the fight, Kong said, it wasn't my night. I was coming with my hands down and Danny took advantage of that. He countered very well against me. On August 23rd, 2012, Garcia agreed to fight ring top 10 light welterweight Eric Morales in a rematch on October 20th in Brooklyn. On October 19th, it was revealed that Morales had tested positive for banned substances. This was part of a random drug test from the US anti-doping agency. It was said that the card would still take place. Garcia decided to go ahead with the fight where he will see a career high $1 million purse in front of 11,000 people might I add at the new newly opened Barclays Center. Garcia retained his WBC, WBA, Super and the Rings titles by knocking out Morales with a thunderous left hook in the fourth round after the fight Garcia said I showed him too much respect in the first fight. You see the first fight. I thought this would be more of a war. I never ducked anybody. I fought Kong and nobody gave me a chance. Keep lining them up and I keep knocking them down. On November 6th, Golden Boy Promotions announced a deal that had been reached for Garcia to defend his world titles against former two-way champion Zab Judah. The fight took place on Showtime. On December 1st, the official press conference got heated between Judah and Andrew Garcia. After Andrew began insulting Judah over his previous losses and performances, Judah eventually stood up and shouted, I have a lot of respect for his father, but I won't be disrespected. Judah was aiming to become the first ever four-time light welterweight world champion. Garcia defeated Judah by unanimous decision. Garcia started the fight off strong, landing body shots. Garcia badly shook Judah in the fifth, and it was believed that the fight would come to an end in the next round. Garcia eventually dropped Judah in the eighth round following a straight right. After the fight, Garcia said, regarding the bad blood, it's gone. It's a respect. As you can see, it's a lot of bad blood. I've got cuts. He has cuts. We came here and gave the people of Brooklyn a nice show. 
On July 18, 2013, it was confirmed that Garcia would meet Argentina slugger Lucas the Machine Martise on the undercard of the Floyd Mayweather vs. Canelo Alvarez Super Fight September 14, 2013 at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. The fight would be one of the most expensive undercard fights in history. Martise won several of the early rounds putting heavy pressure on the champion by utilizing speed and punching power. In the middle rounds, Martise sustained an injury to his right eye from Garcia, to which Garcia targeted the eye throughout the remainder of the fight, taking the lead on the scorecards and closing Martise's eye. In the 11th round, Martise landed a punch that knocked out Garcia's mouthpiece, but Garcia tightened up and knocked Martise down in the 11th round with a four punch combination. Garcia was docked a point in the final round for low blows, but the last round was very competitive. Garcia took the unanimous decision giving Martise his first decisive loss. With the victory, Garcia won the vacant lineal light welterweight title. For beating Judah and Martise, Garcia was named 2013 Boxer of the Year by Stiff Jab. Danny Garcia's next title defense came against veteran boxer Mauricio Herrera. The fight was to be aired on Showtime and was the first fight for Garcia in his parents' homeland of Puerto Rico. Garcia retained his titles in a disputed majority decision win over Herrera. Showtime commentators Al Bernstein, Pauli Malinaji, and Steve Farhood scored the fight in favor of Herrera, but the two judges scored it for Garcia with one card at draw. Herrera's jab consistently scored and he was viewed by onlookers as the slightly busier fighter. After the fight, Garcia said about Herrera, He's a crafty veteran. I know every time I step in the ring, every contender I fight wants what I got. So they gonna train their heart out and give it everything they got. So I expect that. He's a good fighter and it was a good challenge. I had to make adjustments and I'm the true champion. Herrera believed he won the fight. After eight rounds, two judges had Garcia ahead and the third had Herrera. According to Bobby Hunter, known for collecting scorecards, 70% of the media scored the fight in favor of Herrera. It was announced that Danny Swift Garcia and Lamont Peterson would fight April 11, 2015 on NBC Primetime. In the early rounds, Peterson was very defensive and attempted to frustrate Garcia with his awkward style. Garcia was the busier fighter the first four or five rounds throwing and landing more punches although having trouble landing clean punches on Peterson. Peterson looked strong going into rounds 10, 11, and 12 but gave away round 10 completely. Garcia maintained a steady attack in the last three rounds of the fight while Peterson began coming forward and throwing everything he had possibly suspecting he was trailing. Despite a very strong showing by Peterson, Garcia was awarded a majority decision. Garcia would make his welterweight debut against 34-year-old former world champion Pauli Malinaji at Barclays Center in a premier boxing champions fight shown on ESPN on August 1st. Garcia won the fight with a ninth round technical knockout at 2 minutes and 22 seconds of the round. Garcia pushed the pace early, walking through Malinaji's jab and firing to the head and body with both hands. Malinaji was cut above the right eye by the third round and had a large welt beneath the right eye in the sixth. Malinaji was still taking a beating at the 2 minutes and 22 second mark of the ninth when referee wrapped his arms around to signal the end, beating Malinaji's corner which was about to throw in the towel. Garcia would next face Robert the Ghost Guerrero on January 23, 2016 at Staples Center in Los Angeles in a PBC fight broadcast on Fox which was the first ever major PBC event to be broadcasted on the network. Garcia won by unanimous decision becoming the new WBC welterweight champion. Garcia celebrated in the ring after the fight with his daughter Philly and praised Guerrero. I'm excited. Guerrero is tough. No one has ever stopped him. He came to fight. He was in shape. I'm taking nothing away from him. Garcia would move on to fight undefeated at the time welterweight champion Keith Thurman who held the WBA title. At a press conference on January 18, 2017, the fight was officially announced and it was said that it would be shown live on CBS. The conference got extremely heated, leading to Andrew Garcia standing up and shouting racial slurs towards Thurman. Garcia lost the fight on a split decision, making Thurman the unified welterweight world champion 
Thurman started off as the aggressive hitting and moving back to avoid Garcia's counter hooks. This was the case for the majority of the fight. Garcia began coming forward through the middle rounds and pushed Thurman on the back foot. Thurman backed off in the championship rounds believing he had a comfortable enough lead to win the fight. MC Jimmy Lennon Jr. gave Garcia false hope that he had won the fight when he announced WBA before WBC, making Garcia believe he had won. Garcia spoke in the post-fight interview believing he had a good case of winning the fight. I thought I won. I was pushing the fight, but it is what it is. He was trying to counter. I had to find my spots. The fight was attended by a boxing record of 16,533 at the Barclays Center. On April 24th, Keith Thurman vacated his WBC title, forcing the organization to mandate Sean Porter versus Danny Garcia for the vacant title. Sean Porter started off slowly in the first four rounds of the bout, but then came on in the second half and took over dominating the remainder of the bout. Both boxers boxed in the first quarter of the fight. Porter had little success in doing this. He then made adjustments and began fighting more on the inside and connecting with body shots. Sean Porter became a two-time world champion after defeating Danny Garcia via unanimous decision. Garcia believed he had won the fight, but did not complain about the results. Garcia would bounce back and defeat Granados in the seventh round after dropping him to the canvas several times during their bout. Let's get into some of Angel Garcia's outspoken comments and news conferences before Danny Garcia's fights that I didn't mention. After Garcia's win against Polly Malinaji, Angel said that if he were Malinaji's father, he'd tell him to retire. At the Eric Morales conference, Angel unleashed a tirade in Spanish against Morales' trainer father, Jose. He said also Morales didn't really care about his son because he allowed him to take a fight at the age of 36 against his son. Angel Garcia also disrespected Morales' mother in Spanish. Before Danny Garcia fought Amir Khan, now Khan is a Pakistani Muslim from England and this is what Angel Garcia had to say about Khan's God. He said, Khan's God is a punishing God while his is a loving God. He also enraged the Khan camp by saying he never saw a Pakistani who could fight. At the Keith Thurman press conference, I'm just going to be real with you. He repeatedly called Thurman a bitch ass nigga. Now, in defending himself, Angel points to his rough upbringing in Philadelphia in the 1970s. I lived through racism, he says. I got treated racist in this country. I was part of that shit. You going to call me racist? I remember the girls in my class wanting to pull my hair. They said I had dog hair or they would make fun of my poor clothes. My mom used to whisper me because she didn't speak English well. People would yell, speak English whenever she spoke. The racism was real, man. Now, Danny Garcia commented on this. He said, sometimes he'll say something, but it'll mean something else. If you don't know him, you will take it the wrong way. He's just an odd individual. Moving on. In what was once a vacant one-story building, Danny bought a gym and various properties on that lot that he purchased in 2013. Now, there's a store with his merchandise, a car wash, car shop, a barber shop, and a recording studio for his sisters, who are twins by the way, who perform as the CNG twins. Now, they have a single, I believe it's called Saison, and it has over 1 million views on YouTube. You can look it up. Now, back to the jump. There is a moral behind the ring that portrays Garcia victorious standing before the Puerto Rican flag, and there are old promo posters that are along the walls and on most of them the faces of Garcia's opponents are crossed out with duct tape. Now there was a poster at the doorway of a drawing of Andrew Garcia wearing his trademark black shades and holding both middle fingers in the air. Now the words around the image reads, you know nothing, I know everything. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. Again, please give this video a big thumbs up and for those of you who are new, Subscribe. See you in the next one. Go! I don't like fighters who talk too much. I'm the world's greatest. He must fall in five rounds, but if you talk about me, I'll cut it three. What's gonna happen to him? He might be great, but he'll fall in eight. I'm the prettiest fight in the ring today. That's my label. I'm gonna prove that I am still the real champion, and I want them all to.